Our cruising speed is 107,000 kilometers an hour. That's 30 kilometers every second. But remember, we're not traveling in a finely stabilized spaceship. This is a giant merry-go-round. We all know that the Earth turns on its axis, but how can we tell? When we look at the sky, we see the sun rising in the morning, climbing into the sky at noon, and setting in the evening. Then at night, we see the moon and the stars doing much the same thing. But if we look at the Earth from space, we see that half of it is always lit by the sun, while the other half is in darkness. This is what we call day and night. Our field of vision turns with the Earth. In the day, we see the part of the sky where the sun appears. At night, we see the part of the sky which isn't exposed to the sun's rays. So we can see the stars and the planets. In fact, when you look at the sun, it seems to cross the sky. While in reality, it's motionless. It's just that you're seeing it from a revolving merry-go-round. Tonight, you'll see the moon, the stars and the planets rise, glide across the sky and set. But it's really the Earth which is turning as it hurtles through space. On the 20th of March at the equinox point, we'll be here and spring will begin. But these pictures don't show the true proportions of the Earth and Sun. Compared to the Earth, the Sun is very, very big. Imagine a Sun the size of a great cathedral. On the same scale, our Earth is just a soccer ball rolling five kilometers away on the edge of town. Still, on the same scale, Jupiter, the greatest of the planets, is the size of a car, driving along 30 kilometers from the city. And on the same level, Pluto, the most distant planet, is a mere tennis ball, moving on an orbit 200 kilometers away. A cousin so distant, we might wonder if it's still part of the solar system family. A family completely dwarfed by its colossal sun. All the planets, Earth included, represent only a thousandth of its mass. What we call the solar system turns out to be the sun and a few pebbles. The Earth is one of these pebbles. It takes 365 days, 12 months to go around the sun. The closer a planet is to the sun, the faster it moves. Venus is closer to the sun than we are. The brightest of the planets, it's easily visible, sometimes in the evening, sometimes in the morning. It completes its orbit in less than eight months. Even closer to the sun, Mercury completes its orbit in less than three months. You'll find it hard to see Mercury. It's too near the sun. Mercury, Venus, and then the third stone from the sun, us. Next, still farther from the Sun, the planet Mars moves slower than we do, taking two years to make its way around. Much more distant than Mars, Jupiter, the biggest planet, takes 12 years to complete its orbit. Even farther away and slower still is Saturn, 30 years for a single orbit. Beyond Saturn are Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which takes 248 years to go round the Sun. In our family of planets, four are visible among the distant stars, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. To help you get your bearings during this year-long voyage, here's a frame of reference, the Zodiac. The Zodiac is an imaginary band where groups of stars are set out, constellations marking the different sectors of this vast backdrop. The constellations of Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Today, the Earth is here. The Sun is in line with the constellation of Sagittarius. The Sun is in Sagittarius. After a few weeks, when the Earth has continued on its orbit, the Sun will be in line with the constellation of Capricorn. The Sun will be in Capricorn. At 
At night, you can locate the planets using the constellations of the zodiac. Saturn sometimes appears in line with the constellation of Pisces, and Mars in line with Virgo. The Sun in Sagittarius in January. In the horoscope, it says Capricorn. If you're born a Capricorn, it means that the Sun was in Capricorn on that day, doesn't it? We mustn't confuse the constellations with the astrological signs, based on the zodiac as it was 2,000 years ago. Since then, everything has moved on like this. Because over the millennia, the Earth's axis slowly swings and changes the angle of the constellations. The sun's light takes eight minutes to reach us. The sun and the planets are very close to us. This is our neighborhood. But for the light that reaches us from the stars, it's quite a different story. You recognize the Great Bear, Big Dipper, when you look north. The Great Bear is made up of seven stars. Imagine we're looking at the Great Bear, not from Earth, but from another part of the universe. Here we see that its seven stars lie at very different distances. The light which reaches us today left these stars in different centuries, showing us the image of a star as it was in our grandfather's day, the image of another as it was in the age of Charlemagne. These images dating from different centuries are superimposed to form our view of the Great Bear. The light which shows us the image of the Andromeda spiral today left that galaxy more than two million years ago at a time when even cavemen hadn't yet appeared. Stars, galaxies, and all these very distant objects are images from different ages. You travel back in time when you see them. But when you look at the planets, you see them now, live. In the solar system, we travel in the present. When we look at the stars, we see the past.